so ready, man. I'm so ready. <laughs> and we are live, folks. Welcome to the Sit Down Standard, the podcast celebrating all the amazing things you can do while sitting, whether it's enjoying movies, watching television, or playing games, or enjoying virtual reality. As Whoa. What? Podcasting Whoa. with VR. <laughs> Podcasting in VR. Uh, so I am your host, David Bray. I'm joined, as always, by Gerald Bales. Hi. And Jordan Peterson. That's a Mr. Jordan Peterson to you. How are you guys? Are you guys doing good in VR pretty, there? It's pretty good. How long are you going to keep that on your head? Pretty good. I can look at my notes here. <laughs> <laughs> you have virtual it, notes. It doesn't work. It. If I if I put I can see it. <laughs> Here's the deal, folks. This is an exact reason why you need to go to YouTube and check out our video version of our podcast <laughs> if you're just listening to the audio version, because you can see Gerald put silly things on his head. Yep. Um, but as always, if you are listening to the audio version, you can check us out on iTunes. You can also go on SoundCloud and Stitcher Radio. And you can also email us, which one of our awesome listeners sent us an email. Yep. What? Yeah. Let's email listen, time. Read it out. Okay. We got an email from Aaron from Texas. He's from uh, College Station, Texas. Gig him. A A R A Ron. A A Ron. A A Ron. A A Ron sent us a uh, email. And uh, first thing he wanted to say is he loves the show. So already we'll continue well, reading the email. We <laughs> like him so stop, far. Stop there. You know, sincerely, A A Ron. Um, but he wanted to say that he agrees with most of our topics on the show. Um, he actually likes the fact that we did a food episode, by the way. We need to do another food episode. Uh, we could have done food for like four hours. <laughs> I'm fat uh, enough as I am. I love food. <laughs> the other thing you said is, seriously, what's the deal? Why isn't Diablo 1, 2, or 3 on our top five video games of all time? Diablo 2 was Diablo- almost on my list. Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction, mainly the expansion. Okay. Those ball runs, you know what I'm talking about? Doing ball runs? <laughs> Um, Diablo, honorable mention. Honorable mention. Diablo, Diablo three sucked. Yeah, Diablo uh, three wasn't very. I'm gonna be completely honest. That was a horrible game. I, yeah, it yeah. was too fast. It was fun, but then it was like, hey, just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and yeah. over again. Okay, Sorry. but his bigger concern, uh, why he sent the email, was in response to our Batman versus Superman review. Uh, oh, here we go. The, so the big thing he had is he wanted to know why we love Star Wars so much, but then essentially crucified Batman versus Superman. A couple things that he pointed out. Can, wait, can I answer that question? No, 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 no. Let me get okay. through it. Okay, so <laughs> first thing is he wanted to... He, he, it's his, Obviously, it's a Zack Snyder film, so it's going to be dark. It's going to be gritty. That's just his general style. And mm-hmm. he also mentions a couple of the points that we kind of brought up with, obviously, WB, Warner Brothers... DC are obviously going to be competing with Marvel. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. They're, they've they always been in competition with each other. They're going to be in this movie space. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Marvel is obviously years ahead of them in relation to where they're at in their comic books, mm-hmm. they have to make some decisions. They just, no, they don't. Well, <laughs> I, I, I do agree with the fact that I think they do have to make certain decisions based off of how Marvel moves, which, again... I, yeah, I, but I, make good decisions. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. He did want to say he's not just some blind DC fan. He does prefer DC over Marvel, but he's he he Fair understands enough. the both cool, of them, cool. right? Um, and he also, lantern for life, Black Lantern. Wah, wah, wah. Exactly. Um, the big thing here is he said, go back and watch the other Superman, Superman Returns, and you might actually appreciate Batman versus Superman. Superman Returns was horrible. I actually didn't. I didn't hate it. I Superman Returns movie. was horrible, but it wasn't as bad as Batman versus okay. Superman. So now that we've had basically a week to talk about this, um, the thing I wanted to bring up is: it, has your guys' opinion changed? Have you thought about it? Because I've I've read a bunch of articles about it, um, and saw a bunch of other people's reviews and some of the good things that people pointed out that maybe I didn't think about. One is is that um, what were you going to say? I was going to say, are we going to answer his email first and then kind of get into? Yeah, that, yeah, or? we'll get into that. Okay, okay. but um, the, it'll kind of be corresponding to my perfect week week of thinking about this. Okay, so first things first. I am very appreciative of the fact that this is the first time in the movie space that we've actually had Batman and Superman on the screen. Like, that's super cool. If you don't want to count animated series. Right, well, I'm saying as a big big movie, box office, blockbuster, you know, that kind of stuff. So I definitely appreciate that. I generally like what they've set up. I'm not opposed to where they seem like they're going to go with it. That being said, the problem that I have with and it's the same problem that we talked about earlier is that you have characters. I understand Zack Snyder wants to do his own thing and I completely appreciate that he's doing something different. The problem is, is everyone walks in with preconceived notions and we didn't just, we saw a Nolan movie not too long ago. You know what I mean? So we have preconceived notions of who Batman is and you make changes to him in the instance that we talked about in the, if you haven't seen our spoiler, they make some changes with his character, mm-hmm. but they don't Big changes, but they don't really necessarily provide the motivation or the background for it. And that's fine. If you really don't want to handhold the audience, but you also want, have to understand that that is disorienting. You yeah. know what I mean? Like Very. it's, it's not what you're used to. So it, you get pulled out of the movie. Now, if you show the motivation in the background, which again, I think this movie, they show some brief glimpses of it, like Robin's <clears throat> costume and stuff that kind of led Batman to how he acts in this movie but I mean just it's very brief and it's not I don't think it's enough to go as far as 
what Batman does in this movie. Right. So that's explain that for me. I, like I said, I, I am appreciative of Zack Snyder's again. I think he can shoot a movie like nobody else, like his cinematography in this movie, like just the fight scene with Batman. It's is, unique. I'll give it's you that. awesome. Like it's super cool. So that's kind of how I feel about it. I feel about it is I am appreciative of the fact that it exists. And I would tell people still go see it. Cause I think there's a, there's enough. If you are, especially if you're a comic book fan, there is some definitely some comic book fan service in this movie versus like a Marvel movie. With that being said, I still I don't know. Marvel I don't know about that. I'm saying the there's fans. some there's some deep deep DC stuff in this movie that only a hardcore DC fan would know. Like if you casually but That's the problem. You go too deep into that nerddom. It's not like Marvel <laughs> where you got, "Oh, they got Howard the Duck. That's cool. Member nerds Howard the Duck. That's oh, so Howard cool." Duck is so cool. Yeah, we like Howard the Duck. Yeah. They had the the Space Dog and in, in Guardians of the Galaxy, those little fan services, but when you're Putting stuff in Batman Superman that's like only the nerds will get super, super, super nerds will get these. Right. Um, it's almost it's it's too deep. It's too no, deep. I agree. And and we talked. I we were talking about this earlier off the podcast that it, the week to week from Friday to Friday it's one of the low, highest percentage Dropped drops. Eighty one percent from from wow. making money. Eighty one percent from its wow. opening weekend to its second weekend. And, and you know, I have to say, like the people like me, like I was talking to my brother, and I was like, hey, it sucked. It was Fantastic Four dropped like seventy four percent. So this is even yeah. worse. And he was like, and I was like, I'll still still make a, you know millions of dollars on this thing. But he was like, maybe not, because people like me who aren't big fans talk to their little brother who is a big fan and realize that it sucks, and I'm not going to go bother going seeing it. And, yeah, I probably had two people at work that are like, I'll just wait. Yeah. Then. But they'll still see it. That's it's, the... it's word of mouth, though. I'm just saying we're oh, all saying that it's horrible. And no one's going to see it. Like it's it, you need to have buzz. The yeah, you've got to have buzz. people who are into it behind it to say mm-hmm. you've got to go see that movie. Like when Ant Man came out, people didn't know who Ant Man was. Nobody knew it was still a Marvel. Look at like film, Guardians, blah, blah, Guardians blah. of the Galaxy Guardians is the perfect the Galaxy, example. Yeah, but when people saw it, we said, "Go, you've got to see this movie. It's a fantastic movie." And then other people saw it and they thought it was fantastic and they passed it on. So it held top box office right. for weeks and weeks. Where this movie, we all just said, "Take your, keep your money. Wait, wait to rent it or." Hit and it a, on Netflix, or something. and a big thing to get that you know that magic one billion dollar number um, is repeat viewings. You know, it's you going to see it, then you tell your friends go see it, and then you go with your friends who haven't seen it, and it, those repeat viewings are really important. And right. they're not going to get that with this movie because it's and, that bad. And I have to just to respond to the viewer to compare Star Wars to this at all is like uh, Star Wars was fantastic. It was a really great <laughs> right. movie, Objectively, and this yeah. was not a good movie. It Even the worst of the Star Wars franchise, Phantom Menace, which arguably is terrible is a way better movie way than better I mean, no no oh no, please it, it was way better i stayed no. awake for phantom menace yeah but you <laughs> I, didn't have twins when you yeah, went yeah that's this. true <laughs> but i either way i'm just saying that the phantom menace was in i watched it recently and it was more enjoyable than no. this movie i think you've just out. become pod racing scene is the most enjoyable part of that movie and it's more enjoyable i would rather watch that scene than there's nothing anything about it i like movie. more in this world than superheroes i know <laughs> and that was the most disappointing thing i've ever seen in my life I, it, besides Matrix Three, Fantastic Four, or this which one's worse? Uh, they're very, very close. I have to but, say, but Fantastic Four was worse, and it's because they put that. the word "fantastic" in it. No, the payoff was Fan worse. Fantastic. I, I actually talked to a friend at work, and then we were talking, we were going back and forth, and he 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 brought this up. He said the payoff when you get through Fantastic Four, all the horribleness, and you finally get to the fight. It's not even good. Not even good. <laughs> At least in this movie, you get to the fight, and when Wonder Woman rocks it, it's 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 cool. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I was like, all right, fair enough. You're right. And this that, one beat out Fantastic. Four. Right, and I think what I'm what I'm trying to say is, I think this movie at least sets up those characters, and hopefully, and again, I think it also is a good contrast. I mean, at the end of the day. Maybe the expectations, because they are lowered for these movies, might actually help in in some instances. I'm interested, like I said, to see Suicide Squad because it looks like it's a different tone, it's a different direction, and I'm I hope that they obviously it's going to be tied in. They'll do something, but the problem that I had generally with DC versus Marvel, DC versus Marvel is always going to exist, and in reality, DC, as much as people love DC, it will always play second fiddle just from marketing. Now, I'm not saying objectively, they might have better storytelling, they might have better characters, but if you go to, on the street and you ask. 100 people named 10 superheroes. A majority of those superheroes will be Marvel superheroes. I disagree. I think the first two you'll hear is Superman and Batman. Yeah, and then yeah, after but that... the other eight. Okay. Fair. But yeah, I'm just <laughs> that's saying... That's my point. That's my point. Those will be one and two. No, agreed. Agreed. No, I, right. I agree. They are. They would be high on that list, but I'm saying at the, at the same time, the majority of the superheroes that people think of now, I think, are Marvel. Now, that with that being said, I think DC sometimes feels like it has to... It's the little brother, right? So it always feels like it has to 
you know, try too hard. I don't know if that, mm. I feel like I'm insulting people, but I'm just saying you I are. get that feel. <laughs> I get that feeling from this movie that it's trying to play catch up when it really doesn't have to. I mean, no, in reality, they can take their time just like Marvel no. did. They'll, yeah, they're, they're not going to get some of that Avengers money right off the bat, but that payoff, as long as you develop these characters quickly, like Marvel did, yeah. the payoff will be a lot more and you're screwing your fans by I doing a disservice like this. It just if they sucks. did this movie after four <laughs> other movies that actually explained everything properly, if this would have been a great movie. Of course it'll be. It, of Which course. is sad because they, they've they like all these new movies that are coming out are prequels to this movie. I know we <clears> talked about this last week, but they could have just waited and just done it slowly. We would have all gone and see the new Batman. We would have all gone and see Wonder right. Woman. We would have all gone and see all the people that go and see Batman versus Superman are going to see these other movies, Green Lantern Corps. I cannot wait for Green Lantern yeah. Corps. I don't care how much I hate Batman <laughs> Superman. I cannot wait for Green Lantern Corps. Uh, it's just it's sad that they felt the need to skip all those things to hit this right. big punch, which was Batman versus Superman, and then just drop the ball so hard. Yep. Yeah. When they could have just waited, done all these movies that actually built up to this big Batman versus Superman, and then it would have all made sense and been a fantastic movie, and we'd all be celebrating its fantasticness instead of saying, what were they doing? Right. And it's just, it's a lot of greed, unfortunately. It's not even like, you, you can't even blame Zack Snyder at this point. It's the people above him that I are mean, like, listen, we want to make this money, this is what we wanted to see on the screen, right, we and make it about, happen. It's yeah. a Spider-Man 3 problem. I don't think <clears throat> Sam Raimi ever really wanted to do Venom. And I, I, and the reason I say that is because he chose Topher Grace to play Venom. <laughs> I don't think he ever knew who Venom was. <laughs> he must There's not no have. way. I mean, how would you pick? How oh, the casting people should be just slapped in the face? Yeah. How do you pick that guy? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so we appreciate the email. I think we, yes, we answered definitely. it. Yeah. Thank you. I like the fact that we, I want more emails of telling us that we're wrong. I absolutely love it. Yeah. And I'll rebut every single. Oh, one of them. stop. That's right. Okay. I'm never. Wrong. Thank you again. A A Ron. Thanks, A A Ron. Ron. Texas. <laughs> and of course, you can always send us an email. It's at sitdowncenter at gmail.com. Okay. Now, let's move into the, well, technically, I guess the second thing, usually the first thing of every episode. What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Ba da 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 da. Thank you, Jordan. <sighs> All right. Let's start with Jordan since he made the noise. Jordan, what you doing? Oh, that's what I got to do now to get first. Oh, I've been VRing it up. 